Good afternoon, everybody. Today is uh, September 16th, 2020, Wednesday. Uh, it's gonna be a it's gonna be a fun a fun hour today with with me, you guys. We're gonna learn something that not many trainers and people focus on. Now, this is imperative to know, uh, and it's overlooked, especially overlooked um, by rescue groups, um, shelters, uh, sport people who uh, do sports with their dogs, um, and dogs that are very muscular. It is imperative to know this, especially after the age of four years old. Why four? That's when stress starts to accumulate. Meaning the topic of today is going to be how to physically decompress a dog. So my first couple of shows were about body language. My third one was about um, calming signals, how dogs relax themselves, and then a constructive way to relieve stress. Um, and one of them that was one of them was mentally decompression. We talked about that, how important it is to find an outlet for your dog. Very important. Um, it's almost the same um, outlet that we need as far as to communicate. OK, and then and then today is going to be physical, the physical decompression in a dog. Um, please, if you have any questions, please let me know. I have uh, I have a few videos to share today. Uh, I got some few illustrations that are going to help. Um, but remember, I know a lot. I don't know everything. So if you have if you have a question, please, please feel free to ask. Um, hello, Heather. I, I see Heather. Here's Heather. Sue's here, too. Uh, Heather Guttill is here. Uh, Charissa, Lisa, I'm glad you can make it, Lisa. This is a good one since you own a a, um, a doggy daycare. So it's imperative to know how to decompress them uh, in case you get one that stresses out in your in your um, in your at your home. Patty, thanks for joining. Amanda Marie, Joe, I saw you on here. Marissa Delgado, thanks for watching. I'm not sure if your dad is uh, if I know your dad. Good man, if I do. Uh, Susan, thanks for watching. Brandy, thanks for watching. Shannon again. Uh, Carrie Ann, thank you. And then the list goes on. Madison Barr, glad you could uh, glad you can join us. Uh, let's see, Jessica Perry, Kristen. I'll go down here. I don't want to get too crazy here because I got a lot to do here. I got a lot to talk about. A lot to talk about. Good videos to share. I had to edit uh, the video one of video and I made it really short. I try to only make them two minutes long. Um, only because, you know, I, I want to keep going. I want to keep talking about my topic. So again, decompressing muscle tension, something that's overlooked a tremendous amount. Um, please share this with anybody who works at an adoption uh, for an adoption group or for a rescue group, a shelter. Um, and then anybody who's got a muscular breed dog, please share that. Good afternoon there, Jessica. Um, Angie, thanks for watching. So very, very important, especially if you have a muscular breed dog, you have to have this. Why is that? There's many times as an expert witness when I'm looking at files or I'm just looking at or an, uh, a honest person calls me about their dog and they're telling me, Hector, my dog bit something and will not let go. Or in a report that I read, the dog bit a person and would not let go. Now, if you think about that, why is that? And why is it with larger breed dogs with a lot of muscle that that happens to? Think about that. Muscle tension. I made a huge parallel with my friends coming in from the Marine Corps and myself as far as the physical tension part. Now, here's the parallel. The parallel is in the military, they taught us the more you sweat, the less you bleed. How is that working for us? Not very good, is it? The physical part is just one component of being able to relax your body so you're able to speak and provide and talk to the individual so you can release your emotions through conversation. The physical part is merited, no question about it. Yes, we should work out, we should decompress physically, but with humans, it's imperative to not forget that we have to have conversation about our issues. Dogs don't have conversation. So we need to release their stress physically like we're going to do today, and then mentally, like we talked about last week, which is how? Finding an outlet that complements their instinct. Very important. Uh, let me hear Sally's uh, question here. Uh, Sally Shepard, hi, Hector. My daughter, Lana, told me this would be a good video to help me with Odin. It may be, Sally. It may be. Um, don't waste your time. Don't leave, okay? 
Uh, Lisa Carpenter, Alex and Anthony say hi. You tell them I say hi. They'll be watching after lunch. Yes, my my um, my video will play on replay. Most of my re most of my wa people who watch it uh, and comment about it are in replay. I had I had a tremendous amount of feedback from my last my last video about uh, how to decompress it mentally. You, it's just amazing how many people didn't think about that. You know why is it my dog's not? I thought he was happy, Hector. And then look look what I'm having now. Um, I just talked to them about having an outlet, and they were fine. Um, and don't forget about my flyers on my website, firstclassdogtraining.com. Don't forget about my flyers. They're free for anybody to, to watch. Last month, I got over 20,000 hits on my website. That's fantastic, you guys. Um, my, I think the most I've ever gotten is 50,000 in one month. And most of them are looking at my flyers. That's free information. It's also lowered my phone call volume, which is nice, all right? So please, we're gonna talk about how to decompress a dog. Dogs can't drink or smoke, we talked about that. We talked about how they can't decompress themselves mentally, and so they're gonna do it mentally in the way that complements their instinct, but now it's physical. This is something they can't help. They can't help with this. So how do they develop this stress? How do they develop this stress? Well, there's several ways that they develop this stress. One of them is bad training methods. If you have a dog with a bad training method, let's say he's been overcorrected over and over with a, with a choke chain or with a pinch collar. What is that gonna do to his neck eventually? He's gonna get all tight. He's gonna get all tight. Now, how do you relax that tension around his neck? Oh, you don't? Well, then where does that tension go? That's not good. So that's one method, bad training method. This is one of the reasons why I like to do off-leash obedience. The purpose of me doing off-leash is because the dog is completely naked, only relying on your voice, not even a shot collar, okay? Because remember, the shot collar or the choke chain and the pinch leave a phantom correction if you overuse it. What do I mean by phantom correction? Even though you're not correcting the dog, the dog can anticipate either the shock or the correction and tighten up. And when that happens, they get corrected. They're not getting corrected physically, they're getting it mentally. So then when that happens, when that happens, the dog's still receiving the correction. So now how do we decompress it? Well, you have it? Well, no wonder he's being uh, more destructive, okay? The destructive signals that you get from this are the same if you don't complement the dog's instinct. They're the same, okay? Hyperness, excessive barking, excessive chewing, excessive uh, humping, excessive digging, aggression. So those are the most common ways that dogs relieve their stress destructively. So bad training method is one, okay? Very, very important that we think about the phantom corrections. This is something that I learned just last year, believe it or not, okay? Last year, I learned that dogs, even though they don't have the equipment on, they can still feel the correction. This is why, this is how I know the owners or the trainer has been overcorrecting the dog or over shocking the dog. So we want to be completely naked. I mean the dog, not the person. Completely naked when they do obedience. So they're able, so they're able to feel relaxed. Okay. If, if you do rely on the shock collar situationally, that's fine. That's fine, because now I'm going to teach you how to decompress them. Now, this is one thing that I see in police dogs that they don't do. Anybody that you know, anybody who's got a police canine, please, please refer them back to this to this show, because it's going to teach them how to decompress them from that stress of everyday life. Uh, we had a canine officer in my uh, last week's show. He says he decompresses his dog physically after every shift, and that's important to do. That's important to do. I decompress my dog after every flight because he gets stressed. So I have to relax him. And uh, thanks for joining, Morgan. Uh, and uh, Missy, again, thanks for joining me. Um, all right, let's go back to um, the, the phantom corrections really quick. One of the reasons why I like to have my dog even naked in the house is so he doesn't get those phantom corrections. Um, anybody with an invisible fence, you should remove that collar either during the day or at night. I know sometimes circumstances don't allow you to remove it during the day. Maybe you have kids, and they might open the door accidentally. But just remember, just remember, they gotta have time to decompress it, and at night is a good time. Secondly, remember, 
If you don't decompress them, what's going to happen? They're going to what? Destructive behavior. Okay. Very important. Uh, Trevor, thanks for watching. Jim Carpenter or Jim Carter. Excuse me. Thanks for watching. Aaron, again, thank you. Um, all right. Pulling, pulling. A dog who pulls. So yesterday I got a, I had a dog came to me that was pulling very hard all the time. So I told, I told the person where the tension was built, where the tension accumulated. How in the hell am I going to start training with a dog who's stressed out? You really expect me to start training with a dog who's stressed out? What am I going to get? I'm going to get more stress. So one of the first things I do with dogs, I look at their body language. And remember, this is why you have to know body language, not just for as a trainer, but as a homeowner. One of the first things I do before I start training some dogs, not all of them, is I look at their body language and I decompress them physically. Okay, and that means I have to massage them in certain areas that accumulate stress. Now, this is not stretching. Okay, I, in my experience, I don't stretch my dog because I've seen dogs who have been injured by stretching. That's my experience. May not be another trainer's experience. So I don't stretch my dog. What I do is I decompress them. Okay. I decompress them physically. And you're going to see my dog. You're going to see me massage my dog. You're going to see a few other people massage and you're going to see some side effects if you don't massage and when after you do with two dogs. One's pretty damn dramatic and the other one is not dramatic. I didn't want to set him up to fail. Why? Because he was about 180 pounds and I'm not going to set a dog up to fail that's that big. It's not going to happen. But you're going to see how he relaxes right after we uh, we do certain massaging. Uh, thanks for watching, Sydney and Andrea. Appreciate it, Sarah. Thanks for watching. Long time no see. Yes, Sarah. Uh, I'm trying to see your picture. I can't because I got glasses on. But uh, I'll go back and look, Sarah. Uh, Amber, thanks for watching. I try to get everybody. I got a pretty good group, so I appreciate it. My last video, I've gotten a, quite a few um, views. But the most important thing that I get, not the views, but the feedback that my information is being spreaded and my information is helping dogs. That's, what's, that's what I like the most, okay? Okay, so pulling, you get a dog on a harness or a flat collar or even a martingale that still pulls, what do you think is going to happen after a while? They're going to get, they're going to get tension. Where? Here's the, here's the key thing. Where do they get tension? Okay, I'm going to show you and I'm going to tell you where dogs get tension. They're going to tell you. Dogs tell you where you, where their tension is. Wait a minute. How do they tell you, Hector? Body language. All right. I'm going to show you through body language where their stress is and how to relax them. Very important. All right. They do something naturally that you have to interpret where the stress is. Okay. Extremely important. How painful it is to have a knot. Right now, I have a knot on my left calf. Let me tell you, it is not, it is not a happy feeling. Now, there's many times I massage dogs who have three or four knots on their neck and it hurts when I massage them. And sometimes I may get bit, so I have to be ready for it. All right. But there's many times two, three, four knots on their shoulders and their back. And sometimes in their, in their rear end, I'm going to show you where that it's called. Well, for them, it's going to call the, the gluteus maximus like it does for us, but their butts a little different area. Their muscles are so very important. Now I'm not a vet. Believe me, I'm not a vet, but this is all learned through empirical knowledge. It took me 10 years to figure it out and then five years to perfect it. Okay. Now, who's my field study? My field study are dogs coming in very aggressive. My field study are dogs coming in very fearful. And then right after I massage them, totally different dog. Did I document this? Of course I documented it. I documented it for evidence in case something happens. I got many videos of this to support this. There's certain, uh, there was a, a, a senior citizen in another state who couldn't um, make it to me. I sent her a video and she helped her own dog. How easy is that? Very easy. All right. So uh, excited to learn some tips from my two pit bulls. Yes, Amanda, this is imperative to know if you have a pit bull. You have to massage them in areas that accumulate stress. But more importantly, Amanda, you have to make sure that they don't develop that stress. Okay. One of the things that I'm going to go back to is how you're not going to allow them to pull on a harness or a flat collar constantly. Situational is okay. But all the time, really? Really? 
What do you think that stress goes to? It's, it's very, 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 very painful for some dogs, especially after the age of four when it's accumulated. All right. All right. Territorial aggression at home. Could that make a dog stressed out? Of course it could. What? Why? How? If you get a dog who's constantly barking, this is territorial aggression in the home. We're going to talk about outside the home. In the home. Number one factor. Number one factor for dogs accumulating stress in the home is barking out the window. Is barking out the window. So one of the things I tell people is go get some window film for your windows. Now, you don't need to cover the whole window. This, that's unnecessary. You don't need to cover that. This right here is my door. All right. My door has window film so my dogs can't see in or out. This does not allow them to become territorial in the house. Second thing it doesn't do, it doesn't allow them to look at the mailman and go crazy at the mailman or anybody walking by. You don't want that to happen, people. You don't want that to happen. So the dog sees the mailman and he's barking, going crazy. He And then in his mind, he's literally going after the mailman. So what happens to him, he thinks that he can chase the mailman away. In other words, he's gaining confidence being aggressive by looking out the window. Could be an animal, could be an animal, could be a, a person, could be a, a specific race of a person. Hector, my dog only hates black people. Well, is he looking out the window at only black people? Yeah. Oh, well, maybe you should take the window, uh, put window film up. Hector, my dog only hates people in uniform. Is he looking out the window and scaring people in uniform away? Every day. Then put window film up. Do you see how important this window film is for dogs? It is very important so they don't develop territorial aggression in the home. Where do they rest if you have if, if you have them in the house and they're barking all day long? Where do they rest? Where's their resting place? It's not in the home because they're barking all the time. I've gone and I've seen people's houses. They have no windowsill. Absolutely no windowsill because the dog has chewed the whole thing up. Because the dog is barking at the window. And because the dog has to relieve that stress that accumulated because he's barking at a person, he's got to bite the window cell or bite something else in the house. Or in worst case scenario, when I teach letter carriers, they go through the window. And then I have to teach a letter carrier how to protect himself from a dog attack. Okay? So it's very important for our safety of our dogs to keep to keep our window film on the dog. It doesn't have to look ghetto. It can look good. You can see how some of these look. They look really good. This one's covered all the way to the top. You don't have to. Mine, mine are like this. They're just covered halfway up. My dog has never seen somebody outside. Not through my window. They're in the house. They sleep all day long in the house. Outside, they're playing with me. With me. All right. Randy Holton, thanks for watching, Randy. Susie, I'm glad you got a chance to watch. CJ White, all right, I'm glad you made it. Uh, Jessica Woods, never thought of that. Sue Sparks at everything outside. Well, I'm glad you're watching today, Jessica, because this is a huge factor. Because if you're not decompressing them mentally, then you have an issue. It, it develops physically, and you don't decompress them mentally, watch out. Watch out. You got a dog who could eventually turn into Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. No wonder the dog snapped, Hector. No wonder he won't let go when he's biting something. He's got so much stress around the neck and shoulders. It feels good to bite. It feels good to release that tension. Somebody with an anger problem gets so mad, he can't stop himself. So then he hits. After he hits, he feels good. Which is what? It's not good, obviously, to use any type of force like that. So we have to teach him. We, but with humans, you can feel through conversation, so you don't have to. You don't have to hit. You can actually just talk to somebody. All right. So that was a very good uh, understanding. Territorial aggression in the home. Cover the windows with window film. Have an off switch in the house. In the house, my dogs do not play. All they do is rest and chew bones, and that's it. That's their off switch. Outside, they play. 
I I make I make I make myself emotionally available with my dogs like I would my my significant other like I would my kids. I make myself emotionally available, okay? With dogs I would consider it instinctually available. With humans emotionally available. So it's imperative to have that parallel. All right. Wendy, thanks for watching. Jonathan Templin, thank you. Monica Perez, Rose, thanks. Uh, Marianne, thanks for watching. Kelly Klein, I'm glad you get to watch. Very important, Kelly Klein, with your dog. Stop that visual. Stop that visual. I can't tell you how many dogs go through the window to attack something. All right. Any questions about territorial aggression indoors? If not, I'm going to go on to the outdoors. Now, very important to understand, you can still message me if you have a question. All right. This is imperative to know along with dog obedience. You could have your dog completely well trained. I mean, scoring in the 90 points. And if you don't physically decompress them, have fun. Have fun with that. Okay. My dog, he, he gets stressed that when I tell him to let go of the bite, he lets go of it nice and calmly. How does that, how does that happen without a shot collar and everything? Look, I'm going to give you my secret. My secret is obedience and decompress him completely. So what? He can hear and process what I say. Uh, some dogs will, res will respond to sound coming from the outside. Very good, Randy. Good question. This is this tells me that the dog has got um, hypersensitive and hyper alert. So he has gone past decompression. And now he's on what? He's on alert status, almost like somebody with PTSD. What was that? What was that? And constantly on guard. That It's more indicative that you have to mentally decompress them and physically decompress them so they're not hyper alert and hypersensitive to any noise. My dogs, yes, they're alert when they hear a dog barking or when they hear somebody, but I can calm them down right afterwards because they're able to relax. So they're able to relax. There's nothing wrong with them barking. I just got to get them to stop. All right. Let's talk about outside aggression. Uh, Missy, let me, let me uh, answer Missy's question. Zoe stresses around other dogs, will growl and bark at them and try to go after them. Thank God I have a good grip. Uh, Missy, you have to find an outlet for your dog's mental decompression, which is a ball that she can attack and physical that we're going to talk about today. Both. This is what makes a perfect dog once he's trained. Okay. Once he's trained. Amanda, thanks for watching. Amanda Khan. Uh, Susie, again, thanks for watching. All right, so let's talk about territorial aggression outdoors. Um, I like to have a privacy fence for that same visual, less stimulation like I have in the indoors. Privacy fence. They don't see anything in the outside. Okay, they're inside and they're decompressing back and forth. My backyard way in the back, it's only four foot so I can see on the other side, not just my dogs. I want to be able to see for safety reasons, but that's all they have. There's nothing there at the bottom. All right. Very important. And I don't leave them outside unmanaged. I, I'm out there with them. I'm out there with them. Okay. Many things can happen to where you, you, you can set yourself up to fail. So very important to be manage them outside with you when you're outside, but play with them outside. So when they get out there, this is playtime. This is where I can decompress uh, physically, uh, excuse me, mentally, and then come inside and decompress and not be on hyper alert with everything out the window. Okay. I'll watch you later. Loud barking granddaughter. <laughs> That's okay, Patty. I'm glad you even got this started a little bit. Uh, Megan Miller. I still massage. Oh, I remember your uh, your call, Megan. You're exactly right. He was looking up on a window so high that his back end was very tight. I do remember that. He loves it and seems much more calm. Uh, you're incredible. Thank you, Megan. Uh, you're a very good person, too. I, re I, re uh, I remember you and your husband. Very, very good people. Um, but I remember him climbing up and he was getting the stress in the back end. He literally just needed a good massage to relax him. I do remember that. Hey, thanks for watching, Jeff. Uh, so very important, territory aggression outside. Make sure that you manage them and you only play with them outside. Try a privacy fence. If you don't have a privacy fence, you can literally get a tarp that goes over your fence. Okay, I think I, I, I got a hundred foot in my backyard. I think it was like a dollar for every foot. It was like a hundred dollars for a hundred, a hundred feet and it covered it. I got some pugs on the other side that bark a lot at my dogs. My dogs hear them, but they completely ignore them because there's no visual, because there's no visual, okay? Diane, thanks for watching. Oh, Diane, 
It's been a long time. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, territory aggression outdoors, pain, injury. All right, and temperament. Let's talk about pain. If you have a dog who's older and's got bad hips, if he's got bad hips, where is that stress going? Do you only you think this dog is going to lean forward to avoid the pain in the back end? He, of course he is. It's going to that 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 tension's going to re, be redistribute in the front. So you have to you're going to I'm going to show you how to massage the front. If he's got bad hips, of course he's going to lean forward. It's and then, and then what happens after a while? Tension builds around the neck and shoulders. This is why it's important to watch a dog walk back and forth to see if he's injured. To see if he's injured because he's going to balance, he's going to compensate where he where he puts his weight. He's going to compensate. So if he's got a, a right shoulder that's painful, he's going to lean towards his left. And if he lean towards his left, his left is going to receive more tension. So then what? You need to massage his left shoulder area more. And I'm going to show you that, okay? Um, I had a, uh, I, I looked for this video and I couldn't find it. I looked and looked. Um, I even looked in my uh, external hard drive and couldn't find it. But there is a dog, bad hips, a bad elbow, never received a massage. That dog literally fell asleep in the owner's leg after we massaged it. Uh, finally relieved stress, okay? Um, it didn't have a personal space anymore because it didn't feel so vulnerable because of the pain, all right? Um, temperament. So we talked about pain or injury. Focus on pain or injury to ascertain where that stress is going to. Temperament. If you have a dog who's fearful, don't you think he's going to be more compacted around the around the shoulders and back? He's going to be more compacted because he's fearful. So then you have to massage that area to relax him. Okay. I find small dogs that are a little more difficult than larger dogs. Yes, Randy, that is correct. Chihuahuas and small dogs have a predisposition to internalize stress. Okay. They can hear a squirrel from a hundred feet away and then they respond. That's exactly right. Smaller dogs. I'm glad you mentioned that, Randy. Smaller dogs are predisposed to handle stress internally. Therefore, we need to massage them more than your average dogs and, and find them an outlet. Okay, find them an outlet. This is why a lot of those small dogs bite a lot. Think about it. Yes, they don't cause a lot of damage in such a short amount of time like the larger dogs, but they are, they do bite a lot more. So that, that's why, because they, they're predisposed to internalize stress. Um, one of the first things I do when I get a small dog and he's hypersensitive and hyper alert, I'll be damned if I start training him without a massage. He's got a massage. He's got to get a massage. People, when I talk to member services, there's a seminar that I do, how to deal with difficult people for member services. These people are sitting in their chair, listening to people all day long and sometimes cussing them out. What do you think that does to their body? It tenses up, so they need to relax. So I tell them, hey, human resources, can you please schedule somebody to come in and massage these people every once in a while? They need to be physically decompressed. Almost the same thing. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Heather, I have several dogs. My most certain addition is a male black Russian terrier. Oh, I like that. that was going to be that was going to be my 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 second dog. Um, but well socialized with with my pack. He remains fearful of humans. All right. Um, go back to my I think it's either my first or second video and talks about fearful dogs and how to how to deal with them. Um, Heather, but also they're going to develop more stress around the shoulders. Also, Heather, go back to one of my flyers on how to meet dogs, how to allow people to greet dogs. There's two of them that I have on my website that will help you with that. OK, um, he will be he will be a year next month. That's very important that you read those two. But this is going to help if you don't massage a dog and you start to expose him to people, you're going to add to the stress and then the dog is going to build. So you want to decompress them. You want to be able to decompress them with massage. And we'll, we'll get to that. We'll get to the massage. Don't worry. Loud noises, dogs. Uh, thunderstorm. After a thunderstorm, my my Malo, Malo, my my old, my demonstration dog. He all of a sudden, right around five, he developed a little bit of fear towards thunderstorms and fireworks. So right the next day, it's not traumatic. He closes his mouth, he compacts us, and just soothes himself on the bed. Okay. So I know based on body language that he's stressed out. He doesn't like it. So then what I do afterwards is I massage and relax them so that stress doesn't accumulate and become something else. This is important why you need to know body language. Why is my dog's mouth closed all the time? 
Why is he compacted all the time? You know, because he's stressed. All right, what are you going to do about it? He can't drink or smoke. You can't give him a cigarette or, or 420 for him to relax. All right, you can't give him a drink. So he's got to be, you got to help him relax. You got to help him relax. Um, so very important. Now, loud noises, physical abuse can also get a dog to, um, to be, to be what? Stress. Um, there's many dogs. I just raised my hand and they shut right down. Well, can you imagine that every day, every day? So first I teach him hands are good. And we do that with off leash. And then, and then we go into the dog um, learning that hands, he doesn't need to be anticipating a, a butt weapon. He, he needs to be anticipated love, not, not a butt weapon, love with hands. Don't want to see hands as weapon. Very important. Massage after or during, correct? Uh, massage after, not during. Uh, I massage before I train, um, but sometimes after, if I see something that, like with my dog, Malo, I didn't, the, uh, he anticipated a thunderstorm. He started to stress out. After the, uh, the thunderstorm passed, then I massaged and relaxed him. Okay. Um, so it could be after. It could be after. Uh, thanks for watching, Shelly. Thanks for watching. Um, all right. How do you tell where your dog is stressed? Let me tell you first, and then I'm going to show you how to massage your dog. Okay. Let me just tell you. Now, you guys are going to make some connections here. All right. There's going to be a little light that comes on like it does with me. I can tell an owner when they bring me a dog, I can tell them before they tell me how their dog stretches. And they're like, how in the hell do you know that, Hector? Because that's where his stress is. OK, so this is where let me find dog stretches right here. All right. So look at this uh, picture here. Very important. Uh, let me see if I have anybody here. Daniela, thanks for watching. Tammy, so I shouldn't give my dog bourbon. No, Tammy, you shouldn't. Give it to your man. Your man needs it because I know how you deal with him. <laughs> I'm kidding, Tammy. <laughs> so, very important. Ryan, thanks for watching. Uh, Ryan, Ryan's a trainer. He uh, he came to my class and he taught me, uh, he taught me a method and uh, I've yet to use it. But I love it when trainers share their information. I love it when we share our own information. It's, uh, Ryan's out of Lansing, very good trainer. I can see his passions in it. I can see, you know, his, his love for it. So he, he's welcome anytime at my training to learn. Um, so let's go back to stretch stretches. Uh, stretches. Hi, Dottie. How are you, Dottie? Uh, let's see, Randy. I agree with you on Chihuahuas. <laughs> yes, Chihuahuas from my native country now. Uh, Randy, so I had to get to know them. Very good. Um, so very important, you guys. Let's look at stretching. Now, Daddy, you have an older dog, so this is imperative. This, if they stretch with their front legs out and their head up, look where there's look where their points of stress is. Their points of stress are right behind their shoulder and center of their back. Be like the withers they call them. Okay. Now, that's very important to know because that's your target area where to massage. Okay, very important. Now, if your dog stretches like this with his legs out and his leg and his back legs sticking out, sometimes they'll lean forward, sometimes their head will come straight up when their back end is out. That means they're, they're tight behind their last rib and their hip. And I'll show you where to massage right there, how to massage, okay? A dog that rolls on his back and just keeps rolling on his back over and over, just keeps rolling. His points of pressure are going to be on the top of his shoulders. Oh, excuse me. Or behind the neck. Or behind the neck. Dogs who bark a lot, constant barking, they develop a knot behind their neck. And you got to massage that knot out. If you don't, you're in trouble because that's a lot of tension. All right. A lot of tension. Uh, Ryan, excited to do more with you. Ryan, this is really good to learn, Ryan, because there's many dogs. Your training will be so much easier if you massage and relax them. You're not fighting the battle of wills. You're not fighting a dog's pressure. He's relaxed. So much easier to train. Um, so. Stretches the shoulders, the back, the uh, the top of the neck. Now, 
Look where you see a dog chewing here on a stick. If you see them excessively chewing, then most likely you need to massage their head muscles. This happens with pit bulls, mastiffs, uh, King, uh, King Corsos, just to name a few, I can go on and on. Rottweilers, you have to massage the top of their head. Let me uh, see what you can see. The top of their head and then the bottom of their jaw. That tension gets really tight here. And if you don't massage that tension, it's going to stay there. And then they have to chew it to relieve that tension. This is the area that accumulates tension when they bite and they don't want to let go. And they don't, they bite and they don't want to let go. This is why it's important to relax those muscles, okay? This is why it's important to play tug of war with your dog. Tug of war releases that tension from here and here. You don't want that tension to be released. You don't want it to stay in the dog. What happens if it stays in a dog? Watch out, watch out, you don't want that. So let me get this picture out of here. I hope that helps. If, if, if I move too fast because of time, go back and watch my replay. Go back and watch my replay. Uh, this was on in about 45 minutes. So go back and watch it, okay? Uh, we still got uh, we still got about 25 minutes, so so no worry. We should have plenty of time. And again, if even if I have to go over a little bit today, I'm going to because I don't want to I don't want to make a part two with this. Very important. My son can't run down the hall. That Monica said I can correct them and I correct them, but not helping. Um, let, let I need some more information, Monica. Let's talk about that. Send me a message and let's talk about that, okay? Um, okay, so now let's talk about massaging. We talked about how they develop it. Indoor, territorial, outdoor, territorial, injury, training method. And, and another one could be you just not releasing that tension. All the muscle and you're not releasing that tension. It's very, very important. Cat Gonzalez, thanks for watching. Uh, uh, Sai, thanks for watching. Very important. Let me see here. Uh, how to break my chihuahua from attacking my son. He is fine with me and my husband, but he's jealous of my son um, uh, from attacking my son. Whoa, that's not good, Monica. I didn't see that. Um, you have to develop the bond with your son, um, maybe playing with the dog, taking him for walks, develop the bond with him. And then what happens if you have him sitting on your, this happens a lot with small dogs. We tend to coddle them and love them so much that they, they think that we are, we are their property and they guard us, okay? That's gonna be in another show when I talk about uh, dog aggression, um, especially dogs with a propensity to own you. Um, that's gonna be in another show, but if it's important to you, if it's your son, uh, please message me. I wanna take care of that before, before someone gets injured, okay? So now, let's talk about massaging. I'm gonna, I'm gonna play a video here. I turn off my background, massage. Let's go to my, uh, my target point areas really quick before I do that. Uh, my target point areas that I want to massage. Now, you can massage a whole body if you want. That's on you. But what I'm saying here is that you have to massage those areas that accumulate stress. Now, I've learned the target areas from the dogs that I get. Okay? Pit bulls, dogs with big, large muscles on their neck, uh, head, excuse me. I do their, their head. You see jawline and the top of their head. I go with the grain of their hair. With the hair follicles, okay? The second one is right down the center here of their shoulder blade. This is where a lot of muscle gets crossed over, okay? You'll feel it. Yesterday, I had somebody massage their dog, their pit bull, and she felt three or four knots. I tell you what, as soon as that dog felt those knots out, it was a totally different dog. Um, and then you have your, your trapeze muscles on the dog with similar to their withers. You have to massage that area and I'll show you their lats. I'll show you how to massage that. And then the back area right here, that's when they pull. When they pull a lot, they push off with their back feet. When they push off with their back feet, they're pulling and they're putting tension on here. If you have a harness or a flat collar on them, you're pulling them back, causing more tension back here. And this is where it hurts. This is where it hurts. All right, let me take that uh, picture out. And let me go, let me go to, let me go to the nervous system really quick. So, you know, look at the nerves on the dog. You're going to see their central nervous system runs down here. Look where the pressure points that I've ascertained on dogs, where it develops their head, the withers, shoulders, and back here. 
Look at their pressure points. No wonder it hurts when they're tense. No wonder it hurts when they're tense. That's why it's important to massage them in those areas. Okay. Uh, D know oh, when I massage my pit, she literally falls to the floor. Ah, you should. You're right, D, because all that tension. You want to relax them. Yeah, we showed you. Very good. Susan and Olivia, thanks for watching. Nicole Holton, thanks for watching. Uh, Pris Prisla, thank you for watching. April, you have a, I think your pitbull's still alive. It's been a while since we, since we talked. Um, and you had two kids since then. So I, I, I'm pretty sure you had a dog that was very loyal to you. I remember. Um, and at the time I didn't talk to you about massage. So I'm glad you're watching. Uh, Priscilla, thanks for watching. Very good thing to know. And the job that you do, um, is uh, walking dogs and, uh, being around dogs. Very good to know. All right. Let's talk about massaging. How do we massage? Okay. Let's go into, let me show you first a dog that needs to be massaged. And let me show you the side effects of what happened. And that's what stress is going to do. Now, if you look at the dog, you'll, you'll look at the dog, you'll see how it's aggressive back and forth. Look at the pinch collar. Look at the pinch collar, and he wants a bite to relieve stress, right? Wants a bite to relieve stress. So now we're going to do off-leash. Why off-leash? To get all that equipment off his neck. Get all the equipment off his neck. So he avoids, he avoids that tension. Now, what you're not seeing in this video, what you're not seeing is a dog that was massaged. We massaged this dog already because I wasn't going to start training with him. All right. I was going to, uh, I evaluate him. I massage him. Look how relaxed he looks. And then I took the equipment off. Okay. So it went from a very stressful dog with a, with a uh, pinch collar and multiple corrections to a dog who was relaxed because of the equipment. We relaxed him. Then we did obedience. Okay. Off leash obedience. In, in, to be honest with you, this dog was already pretty, pretty good trained. They did a good job with him. They just needed to tweak it with off leash. And then more importantly, they needed to relax the dog. They needed to relax the dog. Thanks for watching, Leslie and Cindy. I messaged my English lab since he was six weeks old. I massaged my English lab. Yes, very good, Cindy. So he gets used to it. I like that. I like that, Cindy. Very, very good. Um, the most important thing is, is to know where to massage the dog. Not just the massaging. Massaging is not touch. Did you hear me? Massaging is not touch. Massaging is putting pressure. It's putting pressure on there. Okay. That's massage. Now, before I couldn't come near her. I couldn't come near this lady. I couldn't come near her. Now I can. Now look at the dog's body language. I know he's not a threat. Mouth open and he's relaxed. This, I think this was a couple years ago. A couple years ago. Look how relaxed it is now. So this is why it's important. <laughs> she don't know. How, you, very important. Relax the dog, massage him, and go from there. All right, we're going to play another video. So you have a understanding on what's going on a little bit more. All right. Um, let's go into a mastiff, a mastiff dog. Uh, we got plenty, plenty of time here. Daniela, thanks for watching. Michelle. Michelle, you have an older lab. Massage the dog in the way I'm going to show you. It's going to help you. Again, if you can't watch this full video, go back to my replay. Okay? Go back to my replay. Very important. All right, let's look at this Mastiff who needed a massage. But look what the harness is doing to this dog. Just so you know. And they, they, they told you to use a harness? Look what the harness is doing. The harness is causing tension look at the back area look at this back area here that i was telling you about look at that back area i hope you guys can see my 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 uh my pointer if not i if not somebody say something but i'm trying to point out tony thanks for watching appreciate that Susie, every causey thanks for watching uh chris taylor thank you now this now we take the now we took the harness off and we're trying to relax him with just the martingale, but he's still tight. After five minutes of massage, people, after only five minutes, 
Now you see this dog's mouth open, tail wagging and relaxing. Much better. Thank you, uh, Leslie. I appreciate that. Now he's much more relaxed. We massage his back. We massage his shoulders. We massage his um, the area in the back where I'm going to show you where his last rib is and his hindquarter is. And then once we relax him and I give the owners confidence that the dog's able to do this, we go off leash. We go off leash. Okay. Once we go off leash, the dog does not, does not rely on any counter pressure with the, with the martingale or the harness. Okay. He massages him a little bit more because I can see him. He's still a little tense before we could do it again. So then, and then we're going to, we're going to, we're going to go a little bit and then I'm going to, we're going to try to go off leash and then we're going to walk a little bit off leash, off leash. He's not feeling any counter pressure with the harness or the flat collar. And when they don't feel any counter pressure, they're not fighting it. They're not fighting it. And when they're not fighting it, their body's much more relaxed. All right, here we go with the off leash. Look how relaxed he is compared to the very first video. Very first video, he was the very first start of the video. He's compacted, you know, now he's relaxed. Now he's much more. Okay, thank you, Chris. I appreciate that. Uh, she says, uh, you don't see my pointer. Okay, thank you. So you can see it much more relaxed here. Okay, now, now the dog sits and now, now the dog's nice and calm. So if you want the backstory behind that, uh, that dog, just, just send me a message. But uh, we, we, he went from very hypersensitive, hyper alert, tense, looked like fear, but, and, then he, and then he snapped out of it with a massage, off leash obedience. But that's just physical decompression. We still have to talk about mental decompression, okay? He still needs an outlet to fulfill him. He still needs an outlet to fulfill him. Please let us know if you can, you can, you can do figure that out. Okay, Lisa, smart ass. <laughs> All right, very important, you guys. All right, so what I want to do next is I want to show you another video of a dog um, that I ascertained in this call that uh, he he had just got adopted. Uh, the owner's name is Bob. Uh, very honorable for Bob to, uh, to adopt a dog who was disabused. Um, I don't have the full, I do have the full video, but it's literally 20 minutes long. I just condensed it to two minutes. Uh, just bear with, I'll give you the, the little bit of a, the, uh, the backstory behind it. So you have an understanding on it. Uh, the, it's shock collar, I call Welcome it little shock collar abuse. They use a the shock collar and they abuse this dog with the shock collar. Okay. And this dog's he gave me conflicting body language signs. So in other words, he was afraid, but his eyes were blinking and his body compacted, but his body was afraid. So that told me he was getting phantom corrections, phantom corrections. Okay. I didn't know anything about this. I just, we figured, I figured it out with him. Lift okay, up, push down, um, nice so and slow. you definitely oh, don't want to use a shock relax. collar nice. with him. Now, if you notice, even the flat collar that he has on, Same he was thing, still Bob. getting phantom you corrections, that that even with just that on. The right there. So you get, you get I taught right Bob there. how to massage his neck so with the areas that accumulate stress, because when he gets shot, his body tightens up. His neck tightens up more than anything else around his body. Okay. Thanks for then watching again there, uh, Leslie. He Glad you came in. How to play with the ball. Chris Taylor, he has thank to. you. So that's your, very important you know, again. Look at the massage, the neck. That's just one. I'm going to show you a little bit more in detail how to do it, okay? But that's just it, one area. Yeah. There's many areas right that now, need to be addressed. Massage, there's just one that area happy. that's gonna that I'm going to talk about. Be. Go right behind the shoulder blade, right there, and just massage that area. He's massaging. Now the back a little bit is a little compacted. Most common question. Heck, now, now look. Hold on a minute before I answer that. We took the flat collar off. The dog finally relaxed. I got you, Bob. Shook his whole body. Look how happy he looks. 
just so without the black collar on. That, that, relaxes that was a trigger to so me, you, based on body language. That was a trigger. Why? Oh, he's made a the dog's with body language with stress told me that he's completely collar. relaxed okay. now, he's, with he's, not he's even a flat collar on. on. This is why it's imperative to take everything off the dog when I start off leash obedience. Okay. Once we took the flat collar off, he was literally a totally different dog. Mouth open, relax, comfortable, and he was happy. Okay? Normal body language, mouth open, looks like he's smiling, right? That's what he had. Did he have that in the beginning? No. His body was tense. His mouth was still a little tense. His mouth was open, but his body was still tense. This is why it's imperative to know body language. You can ascertain and figure out a problem when, when you look at body language, okay? Abuse with a shot collar. So then we go, we went right to off leash, no equipment. And then I gave him that nylon um, correction collar instead of something really flat. Okay. And then we went into a head halter to manage him on walks instead of anything around his neck. Okay. We went to a head halter so he didn't get phantom corrections with anything around his neck, with anything around his neck. Okay. Hey, Marion, I just seen you say hello. Hello, Marion. Um, so very important. Heather Vega, thank you for watching. D, uh, no flat collar. No flat collar with this dog because this dog was um, abused with a, with a shock collar. Because he was abused with a shock collar, anything around his neck, D, he assumed that it was a correction collar, a shock collar. So we with this dog, nothing. Okay, your goal. And then when we did walk him, I, I, I instructed him to walk him on a head halter instead of anything around his neck. And then when he, when he got to the field, he just cut him loose completely naked. All right, so he'd relax. Okay, I hope that makes sense. Heather Sue, hi. Hello, Heather Sue. Um, I just want to make sure that I get everybody. Lisa, thank you for watching. Angie Miller, thank you for watching. Um, all right, so now, remember, this is not, this is not touching. This is putting pressure. This is putting pressure on a dog. All right, this is putting pressure. So let's talk about how to massage. So I did it with my dog. I did it with my dog. Um, Malo, I put him up on a chair. You don't have to put a dog up on a chair. You can put him, you can keep him on the ground. And now the, there's going to be another video that shows you can do it on the ground. I like to put my dog up on a chair because it opens up that shoulder blade at the top. And then I do the back. Now you notice I'm trying to go in with the hair. My dog's yawning to relieve stress. He's having a hard time staying up there. Now, when I have him on the ground, if I see a lot of stress, I will turn his head and put pressure right where inside that shoulder blade, inside the shoulder blade where the neck and the shoulder blade meets. Inside there is where you want to get it and get it good. All right. Sometimes both hands, sometimes move it back and forth. I had him up on a chair opened up the shoulder blades, or you can do it this way. Either way, doesn't matter. My dog's shaking his whole body. That's when you know there was stress there. If the dog shakes his whole body, then you know there was stress there, all right? Very important to know. And then I do that back area right there. If your dog pulls a lot or is on a harness, that's where he goes. All right, on the pit bull, same thing. She's using her fingers to get in there really good. This is Renee, if anybody knows her. Her husband and her and her daughter came to one of my sessions and this dog did extremely well. We found out many, many things about this dog that they didn't know. Um, one of the most important things that uh, I disclosed to them was about the, um, was about the, uh, the indoor territorial aggression. So the shoulder blade right there, massage that area right there. These are your target points that you want to get to, people. These are your target points, all right? Very, very important. Your target points. And then if, if they, sometimes they don't want to lay down. Sometimes they don't, I mean, excuse me, they don't want to stay standing up because it feels good. It felt so good they want to relax. Have them massage that back area. Have them massage that back area if they don't, if they don't like it. It does, it does cause a little bit of pain in some dogs. Okay, it does cause a little bit of pain in some dogs, but you know what? It's merited. If you ever had a knot um, get rubbed off, trust me, it hurts. 
it hurts. So in a lot of times I can't massage him because if I cause the dog pain, he doesn't know me. He might try to bite. I'm not going to set him up to fail. Let him, let the owner massage him. And therefore they learn too at the same time. And then what? And then I, then I help them and they learn and they can carry that over. All right. Hello, Charlie Williams. Whoops to you too. Um, so very important. Okay. Now, how often do you massage? Um, it could be situational. Um, like after, if, if my dog does bite work, um, if he does bite work, I, I try to only do it like once a month. If, if that once every two months, um, I like to massage him right afterwards, uh, on a plane after the plane flight, I like to massage him. Or if I look at his body language and he feel, looks like he's walking tight, I'll massage him. Other than that, I'll massage him once every three to five days. Okay. You do it too much. You can cause too much. You, you, you gotta, you gotta let the dog recover from the muscles, the, the, just recover from the from the pressure and all that. Okay, very very important. Um, you'll notice that after you massage them, they shake their whole body. All right, like my dog did. So that told us that there was some tension that had to be released. You've seen that Chesapeake Bay Retriever after they got done. After we took the uh, excuse me, after we took off the the uh, the flat collar, what did he do? He shook his whole body. What caused him to relax just with that collar off? Now you know. Now you know how I ascertain the abuse of shot collar. Okay, the dog will tell you through body language. Don't forget how they stretch. If your dog get, gets up in the morning and he stretches front, then you know he needs to be massaging his back. If his legs stick out and his head comes up, you know where to massage. If he rolls on his back and he rubs back and forth, you know where to massage. All right, you know where to massage. Very important. Those are your those are your target areas. Okay. Dan, thanks for watching. Dan, a high school buddy of mine. Me and Dan used to run together. We got to get to our running again together, Dan. Come to Flint, Dan. I'll teach you how not to get attacked by dogs while we're out running. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Michelle Nordell, thanks for watching. Uh, Sheezy Walker, thanks for watching. Chris Pena, thank you for watching. So body language that you're going to get. You got the body, his whole body's going to shake or her body's going to shake like they're wet. Okay, you've seen my dog and that Chesapeake Bay Retriever do it. Relaxing, calming signals. Yawning, licking, itching, shaking, falling asleep. Those are your, those, that's what you're going to get after you massage, okay? Renee with her dog yesterday, that's what she got. After she massaged, the dog laid down. Yeah, I don't want to get up. I feel too relaxed, okay? So, very important. And then mouth open. Mouth open. If I get a, if I get a fearful dog coming in and his mouth is always closed, Okay, this tells me that I need to relax them before we do any training. Now, you could relax them with the obstacle course to kind of like just get the blood flowing in the muscles, but I don't like to do that initially. I like to massage first, then do training. Okay, um, any anybody who's been in my class um, and who I massage a dog before class has seen the side effects of me massaging a dog. They'll come in barking, going crazy. And you know, they think I'm going to get firm with them. And I'm like, Nope, I massage him in front of the whole class while I'm talking. While I'm talking about the class, I'm massaging him. I give him back to the owner. He falls asleep and I continue with my class. Share this with trainers, people. I don't care if people make money off my information. They need to have this, not, not just for money purposes, but to help other dogs, to help other people. That's what's important. That's what's important to help the dogs, to help the people, the ripple effect of me sharing this information. It could be financial for other people, but so what? So what? But it's also financial to them, financial to the dog. Now, if the dog doesn't look out the window, he's not going to be, you're not going to send him up to fail. He's not going to bite somebody. Now you're, you're in essence, I'm saving somebody from getting bit. Okay. You see how the ripple effect is very important. Destructive behavior. So if your dog is displaying destructive behavior, Okay, aggression that's unmerited. All right, hyperness, humping, excessive digging, excessive chewing. I'm trying to think of the last one. <laughs> uh, there's one more, but anyways, if you start to see, um, you start to see this destructive behavior. Look back. What's causing him physical stress? What's causing him mental stress? Okay, and then figure that out. And and it's it's that easy, people. Now look, I haven't even talked about sit, stay, down, come and heal yet. That's later on. That's like four or five more shows from now. Why? If I don't teach you this in the beginning, what does that got to do with anything? 
I can teach you sit, stay down, come and heal. But if I never teach you about territorial aggression indoors or outdoors, what? how is that going to help you? It won't help you. You could have a well-trained dog and, and be what? And be Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. You could have an, a well, very well-trained dog and develop PTSD. You can have a very well-educated individual intellectual person with multiple doctor's degree and still have PTSD. Why? Because they're not mentally and physically decompressing. That's why. Okay? Very important. Makes sense now. All right? My goal is complete off-leash. My goal is complete off-leash. Okay? Now, Dawn, uh, I need help with the recall and runner. You can use the shot collar situational. If you use it situational, please understand how to physically decompress your dog. So if I were to use, I, I don't use it on my dog, but if I were to use a shot collar on a dog situational, I will make sure to decompress him right afterwards. So that stress that the shot collar created doesn't accumulate. Now you could release that stress with play, right? Or physical with a massage hopefully with the areas that I target. Please share this with other trainers. You're dealing with aggressive muscular breed dogs. You're dealing with dogs coming out of the rescue. You're dealing with dogs coming out of the shelter. Come on, people. You don't. You can't tell me that they're not stressed out inside the shelter. All that noise, away, abandoned from their owner, away from human, a lot of human contact. Come on. And then you're gonna set them up to fail by not decompressing them and giving them to somebody and taking them home. Come on, decompress them. Any, anybody who does volunteer work or works at a rescue or an adoption agency, massage these dogs inside. I told you the Genesee County one I did, I took the dog, massaged him there, completely relaxed right afterwards, okay? Very, very important, you guys. You've got to massage these dogs to make them the perfect dog. You have to release their outlet mentally to be to get them the perfect dog. you got to manage them indoors, outdoors. This is what makes a perfect dog. Okay, this is what makes a perfect dog. I'm not giving you any, I'm, I'm not giving, I'm not hiding anything from you. And we haven't even talked about breeds. We haven't talked about temperament. We haven't talked about training methods. We haven't talked about the methods to use based on each temperament. There's a lot of information I still have to share every Wednesday, people. And when I get all done with everything, I can refer people to those shows. And then, and then I can do what? Start talking about problem solving with people on, uh, on Facebook live, all right? Then I can start really helping people, but the information's there, they're gonna have to learn it, okay? Um, all right, so September the 23rd, Wednesday, next week, next week, September the 23rd, I am going to talk about how to manage your dog and how to train them, uh, and about training them, how to manage them and training them, very, very important, um, and how you can set them up to fail. Uh, how to manage them, how not to set them up to fail. And then I may add another topic in there because we got an hour. All right. Um, any questions, you guys? I mean, uh, any questions I'm looking at here, what I got here, Don Dennis, Mario Alvarado. Thanks for watching. Uh, Steve Payne. Thanks for watching. Thank, thanks for the information. You're welcome, Steve. You're welcome. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to go back here. Okay, we have if we don't have any more questions, people. Lisa, Alex, and uh, and Anthony say hi too. Good, 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 good. Let me see what else. Uh, I have to scroll down here to see what we got here. I think I got everybody's questions. If I didn't, uh, please feel free to message me. Um, remember, share this video with people who you may think need it. Uh, adoptions, police officers who uh, who do bite work who do uh, stress work with their dogs, They're, the dog's on a harness, the dog's maybe on a shot collar, which I don't agree with, but nevertheless, they do have them on. Um, teach them how to decompress them and relax them so they're able to let go of the bite much easier. Uh, very important being in the car, stressing them out, barking all the time, that's a stressor, so relax them. Uh, go back in my replay, watch how, to, how the target areas and where to massage them, and then go from there. Uh, D, thank you so much. This was great information. I'm going to share this for sure. Thank you, D. I appreciate that. The ripple effect 
of, of what I do um, is it's it's not it's not measured in financial gain. It's it's measured in in when 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 I when I'm gone. Okay, it, when I'm gone, we all want to leave something when we're gone, and it's nice to leave what what uh, what gift that you've been given. Uh, in, in my in my case, in the gift that I had no control of, the gift that was given to me by God. So I like to share that information to everybody. Um, I had no choice of what I did. I had no choice how I think. I have no choice how I process information. It was a gift. So then I want to share it to people. All right, I'm going to be talking about something else. So let's, uh, any other questions, feel free to message me. Uh, next week, how to manage your dog. And then uh, how, how we talked a little bit about it, but it's going to be a little better next week. Get more in detail so it doesn't interfere um, with, uh, with anything that you can set your dog up to fail. All right. Any more questions? If you don't have any, you guys, please, please don't feel free to, to send me a, a message or, or even a text. All right. If you don't have anything, we'll see you next, next Wednesday, the 23rd, September the 23rd.